Hello and welcome to my show. Today I'll be doing an episode for UX animation. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the engineers on the Fuse core team, but I do mainly layout and animation. So I think it's probably a good thing for me to explain some of how the animation is done. Today we're going to look at a specific system known as the rest state and what that means and how it helps with animation. As always, if you have any questions, please just shout it out in chat and I'll say it. Or if you just want to say hi, say hi. And yeah, stop me at any time. I'm trying to move a bit slowly here just so we can show some of the examples. But again, if there are any questions, just ask and otherwise enjoy the show. And I'll try to explain lots. Hi, Leo. Leo. Nixon? Okay, there we go. Yeah, any questions, just ask. So I started today with a simple circle. Um, I usually like to start with something just so that the app, any of the pre-compile work is already done. And I have this opened up here in Sublime. And just to make sure the connection is still here, I'm gonna change the color. I own this, just to make sure that we're still connected here. Okay, there we go. So I have a new color. <clears throat> so what I want to do today is rest state based animation. Let me make this circle a reasonable size so we can see what we're talking about first. What we're going to do is what I'm doing now with alignment is I'm specifying the layout of the circle. Now layout and actual position are slightly different and this is where the rest based system comes into play. So I'm going to make this one width equals, let's say 50, height equals 50. Now when I save this, we have a circle in the middle there. Let's make it a bit darker so we can see it. That was just a test color. Now we have a circle in the middle. This is its natural layout state. We set it centered, it has a width of 50 and a height of 50. And, and this is what we call the layout engine gives it this position. And to emphasize this point a bit more, I'm going to put this in a stack panel in the center instead. So the circle is still centered because it's centered in the width of the stack panel, but that doesn't make a big difference. So let's do rectangle height equals two color. And let's just put some black light lines around it. I'm just doing these so that we can see what the layout is. So we see this little circle in the middle there. We don't actually need this alignment anymore, but we could do this vertical center now, this center here in this circle is then in the actual center of the stack panel. The stack panel is vertically centered from top to bottom, and we have a little circle sitting in it. Now, what this is, this is the layout. So these things have a stack panel. It's a line, then a circle, then a rectangle, exactly as in the code. A rectangle, a circle, and a rectangle. These are just lines, quickest way to do a line. Now, I want to introduce <coughs> the first bit of rest-based animation, and it, it's a fairly natural concept, and we, we bring up this term rest-based because we refer to it a lot in the documentation, and for most animation, you don't really need to understand what it means, but as you start combining things and dealing with adding and removing animations and multiple animations, it becomes something really helpful. So we're gonna say that when this thing is clicked, what happens when we click the circle? We want to move it, and we want to move it up. Move y equals, how much do we want to move it up? Let's just say 100 for now. And the duration is going to be 0.5, okay. So now when we go click on it, okay. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm inverted, y, positive y is down in our system. Our origin is zero, zero, so we're actually moving down. Now, so this is the core principle here. We have this circle and <clears throat> we click it, we move it down. This move isn't changing the layout. This move is simply adding an offset. It's saying wherever I am, move me 100 plus 100 Y away from that. So it doesn't matter where it is. So if we change the alignment of the circle to be left, It still says 100 to wherever I am. So we put that back in center. And it doesn't matter even if we offset the layout. This layout is an offset thing. So we're going to offset the layout by 50, 10 or something, or 50, 20. 
this move is still saying, well, wherever I am, move me 100 down. And this is the core concept to the rest-based animation, is that these triggers, they work relative to wherever the item is in the layout. This has some very good advantages that we don't have to worry about these animations while doing layout. You do the layout as though the animation doesn't exist. So let's take this offset off again. And this makes, again, so the reason for this is when we do the layout, you don't have to worry about the animations immediately because we're going to be applying sizes to that. And one of the purposes of this is, as I showed you, if you have different layout things, they're each going to do the same thing relative to where they are. For example, I might want to put a grid in here instead. Grid column count equals three. And each count equals six. We'll put six of these circles in here instead. Okay, so now I have six circles, and every single one of them has that behavior to go down when clicked. So these are all relative, and they're all independent of each other. Um, and so, again, as the layout changes, we don't have to worry about changing these animations, because it's always relative to that. It always goes down one. And this is one of the core parts of that animation is that we always do it based in that way. But now what you might be thinking is, well, you know, this is good, but what if I want to do something like entering animation? And this is where it usually gets a bit confusing for some people. And I'm going to take one step back here, though, first and explain something else. And first off, I'm going to put a cell spacing so they're a bit farther apart. Okay. Now, what you often want is you have this moving down, but you don't want it. It's a symmetrical relationship right now. It goes down and goes up at the same speed. Okay, so let's ask if I have time. One of the most confusing things was... Okay, why doesn't the parent... So the question is... Okay, now we're getting excited. Particle animation, that might be right. Okay, let's go to all this question first. Why doesn't the stack panel change? And well, let me demonstrate that this way, is that these moves, they don't affect layout at all. So let's put another circle in the background here. Back, layer equals background. By default, it should have the exact same layout parameters, but it'll be in the background. And so let's make this transparent you okay it's drawing in front of the circle now just so we have to deal with that and that's not what I wanted okay I'm gonna have to split this up a bit just to demonstrate this we're gonna put a panel wrapping each of them alignment equals center and what I'm going to do is show you how the layout doesn't change Now I have two circles, one's in the background, one's in the front. And what I'm showing is that there's two circles are basically taking the same layout. Because this one's in the background, it doesn't take space away from the one in the front. It's just inheriting the space of this circle here. What you might want to do is say, well, let's use a panel instead. Let's use a rectangle. And the reason I'll use a rectangle now, oops, caps lock on. Now what this rectangle, as you can see, is this rectangle is the size of the element. It's I don't have any layout on it, which means it expands to the full size of the element. And that'll be the circle. The circle with the width and the height is the thing defining the size. Now the reason I did this, you have to, so is when I do a move, when I say move does not affect layout, is I mean exactly this. When you click on this, you notice the other rectangle doesn't move. It's because this move operation does not modify the layout of this circle. The circle is still 
lay it out in this box. It never leaves the box. What happens is the animation is offset. We have transforms that make it leave the box. And those transforms are not part of layout. Whereas if you had an offset, an offset is part of layout. So if you did an offset, the whole layout box moves. Or if you modify the size of it, this is a layout change. And you can see the backing box also changes at the same time. And so this is what I mean when I say that this move does not affect the layout. And there's other things you can do that may not affect the layout as well. We can scale it as well. Scale factor equals 2. We'll make it scale at the same time. Sounds pr <laughs> like this. OK, I don't understand the reference to the spoon in the matrix. <laughs> but OK, so when you scale it, Again, it doesn't modify the size. The actual layout size change stays the same. And this is the purpose of the rest-based layout is that in these rest-based animations is nothing's actually modifying the layout. It's modifying what's known as the rendering. And this keeps the UI stable. So you can put all the animations you want on these little pieces and the main UI remains stable. If this were actually changing the layout, everything would become kind of a mess. Now, we can actually change layout as well. I can do that for contrast. It's not as nice. So I'm going to give this a name, UX name equals the circle. So for example, I'm going to do change layout as offset equals 0, 100. Now this offset is an actual layout parameter. Okay, again, but offset doesn't really affect the layout, so it's not going to work the way I want it. Um, okay, let's change the height instead. Change the height to 100. Okay, now this one here, um, I have to check why offset didn't work, but I thought it was the height. Height is a layout parameter, as we say. It's no longer scale and move, it's specifically changing. You can animate anything. But you notice when I animate the height, the actual element size changes. The circle isn't changing size because it's a circle and it occupies the same box. So you might want to just put this in the same, change the width as well. And that's the difference to modifying something that's not a layout parameter. And what this is is a rest-based animation then, and that means it always returns to the same. And what we can do here is that what's helpful here is when you have another animation somewhere else is that they start to stack well. So if we have something on the stack panel itself, let's put another button at the top or the bottom here. Let's just make a quick button, color equals whatever. Call it flip. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show how these things stacked if you have multiple animations on here. I'm going to rotate. And it doesn't need a target because it's in here. And degrees 90. Duration equals, let's make it slow, just so we can see the stacking. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to flip. Sorry, UX name equals the stack. Target equals the stack. Okay. So what we have is that, again, this is also rest-based. When I say rotate this 
stack panel. I'm not saying where and to, I'm saying like wherever it's from now, take it and rotate it 90 degrees. So when we click it, it rotates 90 degrees. And then this stacks with the clicking on the circles. So if we click a circle that goes down, but let's flip it and you click a circle. These are all relative to each other and they stack. This being based on layout is much more helpful than and using transformations is then actually animating the layout will be a problem because if this was actually animating the layout, this down would always mean down and you wouldn't be able to nest these things. So this nesting helps you deal with multiple animations stacked on top of each other. And um, I, I can't, I'll check the particle effect later. I'm not sure how much I want to load the GIF on the live stream. I don't have the link. Um, <laughs> is it a complicated particle effect? And then we see particle effects. <laughs> Great, I made a game. <laughs> yes, that was the intent. Now, now the spaceship's going sideways, yeah. Okay. So I hope this shows the basic arrest animation. Now, what I want to come back to now are the adding and removing animations because this is where some people start getting confused. But before I did that, I wanted to mention the, I want to say what this, how to change this back animation. So when it's going forward, well, what if we didn't want it to go back so slowly? Well, we want it to go back faster and This is where you can say duration back. Okay, who's Matanoza? Yes, it can be flipped in the Z axis. I'll get back to that in just a second as a curiosity. Um, so let's say we want to make this go back faster than it goes down. Okay, so you notice this duration back says, all right, it goes backwards. and it has a faster speed. But I didn't change the speed of the scaling. So you might want to set both of them, duration back equals 0 0.2. Okay. And this lets you have two directions to it. So one direction is faster than the other. Obviously these things have sorts of things like uh, easing and stuff. So you can have a uh, easing equals sinusoidal in out. And maybe for this one you want easing equals bounce in out. Bouncing is a bit weird for scaling. I should have done the Y is bouncing, but let's change those because it looks a bit weird that way. Okay, it still looks funny, but you can see that they can they have easings on them. Bouncing is kind of a weird easing, especially when it's short like that. And I'm just going to take out the bouncing for now. Now the question we have is, can this be flipped in the Z axis? And the answer is yes, but we need a viewport. Viewport, and we need a perspective. I use 100 as a default. I'm never sure if it's the right amount as default. Oops. So to flip in that direction, degrees is normally rotation around the z-axis. This, this often sounds a little bit weird to people using UIs that normal degrees rotation is around the z-axis. And if you actually want to flip something through the z-axis, they use one of the other angles like x degrees. Okay, uh oh, I got an error. Come on. Oops, sorry, degrees x. So now we see this one's actually flipping, as Jesus says, in the z-axis. This is actually a flip, and you can still click on them. They still work. 
It's just a bit hard to click in that access, but you can still see they click and they flip, <coughs> and it's all relative. So this perspective is maintained in the Z axis. And again, once you if you if you're doing 3D animation, this is where it's very important that this doesn't modify the layout. <coughs> because when you just do this, you can imagine that okay, maybe the element layout's moving. But when you flip something with perspective, this this isn't even defined in terms of layout. What could possibly do a layout perspective? The layout is strictly 2D, and this is a 3D animation. Now I'm going to make this one flip in degrees Y instead. Okay. So Y is usually a bit more fun. You'll see it flipping this way. You keep the perspective there. And you can also see this one here. If we want to do this, move X, Y. No, I want to move Z, Y, 100. We can make it pop out in the front too. Or does that one work? Okay, yeah, Y, Z. All right, this one may actually not work here this way. Um, let's do it this way. Move, keep the Y this way and move Z equals, let's move it to the front. Now you might not see that much, but let's check. This should have worked if I do this. It's a bit hard to see. But you notice the ones on the side, these are moving kind of to the front. It's a bit hard to see. And you, you don't actually see it moving to the front this way. This is a bit hard to explain because the viewport's actually flattening it. You, you can't have things actually sitting out in front. And I'm not entirely convinced that shouldn't have worked though. But okay, I, I, that's... <laughs> This goes a little bit away from what I wanted, but I wanted to show that the z-axis does actually work. The scaling probably messes it up with the moving in and out in the z, but things can definitely move forward and back on the z-axis, and they can definitely rotate, and the circles themselves could also rotate. Uh, rotating the circle is probably easier. Degrees x equals 180. This will make like a coin flip type animation. And the ones on the side are a bit weird because of the perspective. It's because the perspective is for the entire viewport, not just for the individual bits. If you really wanted individual perspective, you could add one at each point. And this will flatten the perspective here instead. I just do that quickly. And I screwed it up somehow. Um, okay, yeah, this is, you had to be a bit careful with the viewport. I'm going to leave this out for now. There is a way to put a viewport in a part of the tree, and that'll make the perspective there, but it's a little tricky to get with the layout because something here has to have a fixed size because viewports themselves don't have size. So you can't have it really stretching and stretching. I have to worry about individual bits. Okay. But now I want to go on to the adding animation. And what I wanted to show is when I showed this, you notice it goes forward slower than it goes back. And we're going to exaggerate this effect a bit more. So we're going to make it go even slower. And now you see it. And then it's very obvious it's going backwards a lot faster. The way these animations are built, they're split into two parts. There's a forward animation and a backward animation. By default, if you don't specify any back parameter, like nothing that says back on it, the, the backward will just be a reverse of the forward one. There are a few special cases where <coughs> it's really important to distinguish. And I mean, for the most cases, when you click, it, it almost seems obvious why well, move forward and it moves back. I mean, what else would I want it to do? I mean, I don't want it to sit there. But what if we're doing like adding animations? So let's add some things to the top of this panel here. I'm going to have to add a bit of JavaScript here to make it work. And inside the stack panel items, I'm going to add a bunch of items.
and I'm going to add item spacing to the stack panel. Margin equals five and color equals Nobody ever likes my color selections, so I'm going to just do a green panel, DFD, and I'm going to put some text in it. And I'll just make, I'll explain in <coughs> the JavaScript what I'm doing. So I'm just going to create a bunch of items in JavaScript, and I'll still be using the observable system. In the new system, we have another state-based system, but I'm using the release version, so this will actually work and release. And so export.items, we're just going to create a list of strings. Hello, world. Okay. Um, items, items. Why, what happened here? Okay, it never refreshed. Um, we're still working on that one. Sometimes it doesn't refresh. So we have these items that we can and we might want to have a function to add one. So let's just do that one. I'm going to copy the same simple button here. Do not copy. Okay, instead of copying this, I'm going to do a proper button class. So that I always, I'm trying to force myself to do proper classes all the time. UX class equals my button. Just so we have examples that look okay. And let's stick some padding in here. If I can Three text, uh, and we'll give it a label. But now this click does not part of the class. The click goes down here on the button. My button label equals flip. And if you're uncertain of these classes, you can also just ask. I don't mind explaining things like that now. Um, because usually it's where you stick your animations in there. And we'll have another one for my button label equals add alignment equals center. Okay. Of course, we have to make it do something. So when we click, we're going to say add. We're going to call a function called add, and the add will add a new item. Export that items dot add new item. And it adds the new item. Okay. Now I'm going to take off this alignment of the stack panel now and make it come from the top. We'll see why in a second. Just let it take the whole size. So this is where I mentioned where the backwards and forward becomes important. Now we don't want these items to suddenly just pop into existence. We want them to slide into view. What we'll do here is we'll add something called an adding animation. And this is where at first adding animation looks a little bit counterintuitive. And this is where the rest is. So I'm going to say move x equals 200 duration equals 0 0.2 and I'll just I'll get back to the 200 in a second because that's not very good 200 okay. now you might quickly quickly caught what happened over there if we add a new one you notice they slide in from the side now okay I'm just going to comment out this flipping bit so we're not distracted by it And so now the question is why <coughs> my adding animation, I said move x equals 200, that will move it off to the right. But what's happening is it's actually coming in from the right. And this is where the concept of rest state comes in. Because as I said, everything, if there's no animations, if there's no transforms to find on it, oops, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to comment it out. 
What we're defining in the layout is where they are normally. This is where the items are without any changes on them. But this move is a transform. So it modified its natural layout. And this means for adding is what we're saying is like, look, when we're adding it, let's start at X200. And then undo this animation. So what we're effectively doing, actually not effectively, technically what's happening is we're running only the backwards animation here. And I don't know why I commented out. I can put this right back again because I want to show this bar here. This is exactly this duration back in these buttons. You notice forward it went really slowly and then back it went really fast. This backwards animation is, it is a separate animation. And this is what the duration back is doing is setting up that separate animation. What happens with adding animation is we only run the second half. We only play the backwards part because what we're assuming is that when it's added, it's in that added state. So it's at 100% of this animation. So it starts at 100% and goes down to 0%. And you will find this in the doc sometimes referred to as the progress, 100% to zero or from one to zero in factor. What this means is <coughs> you're actually taking the backwards. So this is actually duration back here. It does the same thing because it is actually only using the backwards animation. You can set the forward animation to whatever you want and it's just going to ignore it. Come on, it's saved. I think it missed my updates. Right, something got a little weird here. Um, it's, I'm going to re reify it. Something went a bit weird. Okay. So the idea is that you can put whatever you want for the duration back. It's not going to make a difference. So 100 seconds. And I'll change this one just as well so you can see that it's updated. Uh oh. I think I got stuck somehow. Okay, let's rebuild this. Or can I restart the viewport? It's often an option. Okay, here we go. All right. So just my duration back. So it's a bit slower now, half a second back. But the duration forward makes no difference because it's only playing the backwards one. Now this, let's make it go a bit slower so we can see it. And now we're going to introduce another factor of but we don't want to just do 200 because 200 is silly. We want it to come in all the way from the right side. But we don't have a clear way to say, well, what is the right size? This is a responsive layout. How do I say all the way from the right side? And this move has a, there's a couple ways to do this. The most direct way is to say, we'll move one, but relative to the parent size. Okay, and you notice they come all the way from the right and it's a bit slower now. Okay, I'll put this back to a bit faster size. There are other items here too. There's relative to its own size, and there's also expressions, um, but I won't get into those now. The idea here is that this is, <coughs> these are related to the, it's really not reloading on me, is it? That's really not nice. Okay, it's fast. This animation is relative to the rest state. The same with these clicking animations. Everything starts at its rest state. And by rest state, I mean the layout state. Where is it naturally? And when you do an animation, it makes it relative to that. Wherever it was, let's make it relative to that. Oh, small clipping error there. I'll look at that one. Okay, and then we have the flipping. Oh, we're flipping the whole panel now. You can add things in this state too. Okay. And that explains the basic why adding it's using the back is because it's only taking the backwards side. And we can also do a removing animation. Move x equals minus one relative to the parent size. And this only uses the forward duration because it's never going to play it backwards. And this is something special about remove. 
Um, I better put clicked here, remove. Export start remove equals function args. Then I should be able to do exports that items dot remove args dot data. Remove the one that we clicked on. So I should be able to click on it and make it go away. Okay. All right, it's comparison must be using the string. So let's add a count here. Okay. It's because I used a string, it was removed. It usually use an object and it does object comparison remove, but because I was using a string, it's using string comparison. And this is where removing is a bit special. Removing only does the forward animation. Normally when you have the click, it goes forward and comes back, assuming it didn't clip on us. Sorry about that. Something weird there. But with the removing animation, it's only played forward. Once it's done, the item's actually removed from the UI. This introduces a little bit of a funny state for this object in the graph, is the graph is, the item's marked like a remove, but not quite removed. It was actually kind of tricky to get working, but we felt the syntax and the way it works was easiest for users to say, look, this is how it should look like it's removed, and it's actually going to sit there until it is done being removed. Okay, so let's do another relative one on this button here. So we want this bar, the margin on the button should have some sort of margin. It needs some more spacing on it. And we want it to be a bit brighter, the color. Put a stroke on it. Now we can add our own clicked here, and this is important in the concept of UX as well. Is that we use click down on the bottom here. On uh, I shouldn't point the screen because you can't see that. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's a clicked right here for the button. This doesn't interact with the clicked I put in the button itself. They can have their own buttons. And say, for example, I don't know why you'd want to do this, probably not a great UX. We want to make the button pulse a bit when it's changed the size. Say duration equals 0 0.3. Easing equals cubic in out. I'm just giving examples of names. So when you click the button now, the button animates as well. Okay. And and this is relative again. Because this is relative to the rest state, it doesn't matter where we put this button. This this button's going to scale however we modify it somewhere else. It's in the layout here, it's over here, it's over here. It's always going to go based to the rest state and and that's an important thing to realize about all these ones. Scale, move, and what was that? Rotate are all relative to the rest state. There's also a shear. Shear's not used as often. Let's actually shear equals increase x equals 45. Not used so often, but you can actually use it if you want. Um, Sorry, skew. What's wrong with this? Oh, that's the problem. Duration. So you can see the skew on it is now. It skews it and you get a shear to it. You have to be careful with skew that on the native a APIs, if we're using a native U host, which will become the default. I don't think either Android nor iOS actually support shears, so you're, you won't you won't see anything. It'll just ignore the shear, and but in the GL backend you can do skewing as well. That's also I should note about the viewport is Android and iOS in native mode will not support the 3D transformations. You will have to escape into a graphic view host. Assuming you're using native mode. By default, we're not in native mode, but we might change that to have native backed apps. 
So are there any questions in any of what I've done so far with the adding, removing animations? And and anything like that. Um, any questions on that? Or shall I do one more thing related to rest state? What else can I do related to rest state? How the animation changes? I can do one when multiple animators are applied to the same one. Let's see what happens there. We'll do it right at the bottom and We'll make another big panel here. Panel box sizing equals fill aspect. I want to see if this works. I don't remember if it does or not. Yeah. So it takes the width of it. Actually, let's change it a little bit. So aspect equals two. <clears throat> And we're going to put a circle right in the middle of it. Circle alignment equals center, width equals 20, height equals 20. Let's give it some color again. And we can even name now center circle. So we have a circle here. Now, what happens if we have multiple animations that apply to the same object? So let's do that with circle. And this is where the rest base becomes really important again, because you don't want things conflicting. So we're going to put a button, my button label equals top left, alignment equals top left. And when it's clicked, we want to move the center circle actually just take the whole vector the whole vector towards and this is a relative amount and we can actually change that um, I've forgotten the syntax for that but let's just do it this way vector we want to say minus 100 duration equals 1 I'm going to make it really slow type something wrong so three, yeah, we don't want it to move in the Z dimension. Okay. Okay. So it moves towards there, and then we'll make another one that makes it move towards the top right. I forgot to copy the button bit. Okay. This one goes to the top. Oh, uh, sorry. Minus 100, obviously. Top right. Top left. Now, what happens if I click both of them? top right and top left. It does something really weird. <laughs> but it makes sense. What happens is we're adding the two motions. So these are both relative minus 100, minus 100. As you click both of them, they both start animating. And they're both animating relative to wherever it was. And it, this line at the top comes up because when the top right's going back down, the top left's going up. And so when one runs out, the other one picks up. And this is really just vector animation here. And this is the default mode that it adds the two together. There are different modes for this working. And I forgot the names of it. Let's see, it's called Mix Up. How do I get to the main documentation? Mix up, mix up. I'll just click on the first one and then go up. Okay. What the default is, is this one called offset. Now, this is important because it says 
this is explaining the difference between the value and the rest value is added to the current value. This is where I mentioned that documents actually add consider the rest value. And what this is saying now is that, okay, treat this as an actual relative vector. But if we switch to weight mode, it does something slightly different. Wait. Okay, I don't think it reloaded that. So not reloading. Let's put a dash and see if it actually reloads. think of why this isn't working. It's supposed to mix them differently. Let me check it move. I think I might be doing something wrong. All right, but you can see the note in move, but move does not affect layouts. So it gets an offset from its current location. Good, that's what we wanted to. And I did something wrong here because I must it's not working the way I wanted it to. Um, huh. It's supposed to mix the two together, but it's not doing that really. It's just adding the two. It's supposed to mix the two. And I don't know why it's not doing it. Just gonna make sure I rebuild it correctly. And what I mean about mixing the two together is that it's supposed to take the average of the two, the minus 100 and minus 100, and, and just apply them weighted to each other. And so it would never go above the top. Or maybe it's not going above the top. Okay, it isn't actually going up to the top. I'm just seeing it wrong. Okay, so it maxes out. If we go back and we say offset, it's because I've chosen terrible sizes here that you can't see it. So you notice that one goes all the way up. Okay, it, okay, Ellis, I figured out the problem. It's, it's just visually, um, we do have mix ups in all of them. You notice now it goes way up high, and it's because it's adding the two vectors together. It's really adding these two change vectors. But when we use weight, it's taking the average. So you notice it can never go above the top one because that's the top is the minus 100. It cannot go above minus 100. So it gets stuck there. And we could probably see that better if we make another one here. Uh, Let's make move right do two things at once. Again, this is perfectly allowed. It's usually not usually used. Let's make the move top right actually go up to the up to the right and down to the bottom right at the same time. And because we're using waiting mode, it's going to make it look just go to the right because it's averaging the two together. Whereas if you took offset mode, it would add the two together instead of averaging them. Okay, and adding, it still goes far to the right and it makes a difference to how far it goes. Um, I just want to point this out because it's something related to rest state. We used to have offset as the default until somebody requests that I change it to, I mean, weight was the default and then we changed it to offset because it feels more natural to use weight or offset by default. But when you're reading these and you're looking for some subtle differences, you can look at the mix op. And there is another one called add, and add just adds the stuff all over. Um, okay, I'm, I'm away from that page. But you can play with them. Once you understand rest state and how it modifies rest state, those items will make more sense. They'll be clear as to what exactly are they doing.
and K. So we have another option here, and this is what I was looking for, relative node. And we wanted to move to the top left here. And I wanted, I don't actually want to move it to a fixed location, I want to have a responsive one. So let's say relative node equals, actually this needs a name now, top left. We want to move it relative to the top left. And I'll explain vector in a second. And then I want to say relative two equals position offset, I think. I think so. It's a slight difference between position offset and actual offset. Yeah, actual, okay. This has to do with layout. Let's use actual offset. It'll make no difference in this case. Vector equals one. No. Actual position. What? Oh no, it's just position offset, sorry. Ignore me. I simplified that. I, I have to sometimes remember when I was working on the code what I called things and how I changed things. <laughs> okay, so now we have that. Now you notice it moves right to the button there. And it's moving this position to the position, and the top left position is defined right in that button there. And we can do the same with the top right. And there's an issue here, but we can fix that as well. And the vector one is this is a relative amount. And this is what we did before as well. Let me scroll back up. When we said, uh, in the adding animation, when we said relative to parent size, and we said x equals one, is what we want is one times parent size. So whatever the full size was, we get that result. And we specified only x, meaning only shift in the x direction. When we say vector, we're saying shift in every direction, x, y, and z. You can also just type x, y, but it's clear if you just say everything in case there's multiple positions. So now when you click top right, it just ignores me because I said center circle. I forgot the relative node relative node. If you don't specify a relative node, it defaults to the targets, which for position offset will have nothing. Okay. Now you'll notice something a little bit weird about this when it scales. You notice this path shifts. And it has to do that the position offset is actually using the real position. I can't remember if that was intended or not. So if we got rid of the scaling, let's do that. It should become clearer. Oops. It doesn't bounce around on us. That's because the position isn't changing. Position offset actually takes the actual position, its modification scaling, and it'll actually try to move it to a scaled element. It means it has a somewhat unfortunate name because it's not really the position offset. It's like the final render position offset, but it's hard to give these names. And But this is what you actually want, except now, you may actually want to set a position offset, something called transform origin offsets. And this will fix one problem. If you notice right now, when you go top right, top right's position is the top left of it. And this is for all layout. By default, is the top left is its position. Except we want the top right to be like top left. It goes all the way to the top right. So we can do transform origin offsets.
and it goes to the top right now. Well, it goes to the middle, and that's important. It goes to the middle and do the both and both of them. What the transform origin offset is, and this is getting a bit confusing, but this all relates to rest state and defining where things are located. And if something's scaled, the scaling is relative to the transform origin. Okay, but now we fix that. We can put the scaling back in now if we're using this. It should work. And the scaling correctly doesn't affect the movement anymore. And it always goes back. The purpose of doing this part was to show you again the rest base. Regardless of what we do in the clip, how we move it, whatever we do, it's always going to end up back in the same space. And it doesn't matter if we're overlaying animations to each other. It knows how to mix them. It knows how to get them back. And so you don't have any absolute things. You always specify relative to wherever it was. How do I want to move it from that position? And this is why layout's so important. This is why layout has so many options. And Again, so the adding animation that way, these ones have a front and backwards animation, which are clipping. I'm sorry about that. And they have a faster back, and these ones show mixing of animations. And they always go back to the rest state, regardless of what we do. And removing animation is one direction out, animation is the direction backwards. And I think this covers a lot of what I just wanted to do. I wanted to give an introduction to this, the rest base. If anybody has any questions, you can ask them now um, while I think of something else that I might want to, I can do related to rest. Um, <clears throat> if you're watching this video later and you have some questions, feel free to just send me a message on, uh, on Twitter and I can come back to this again. I'll, I'll probably do a few more with other types of animation, what you can do. But this rest state is a really fairly important one for the way for the way animation in Fuse works and, and this is whenever you're doing animation in Fuse especially this type of UI animation you should always think about well what do I want it to look like when nothing is moving that is when the screen's absolutely still let's get the layout I want and we'll worry about the actual animations adjusting that layout and this makes it a lot simpler because it lets you actually during the design phase it lets you say okay I, I Let's get the main work through working. Let's start programming it. And we can add the animations later without having to fundamentally change the UX code. The animations don't make a lot of difference. Sometimes there's small things that change. But that's the idea of the rest-based and offset-based animation is that just you can add it on and you can play with it and, and, and never get screwed up. Even when you combine animations, it knows what to do. Now, this may not be some cases you may say, well, look, I want to do something else, and there's fine-tuning parameters. But the key thing when mixing is that because we use this REST-based, our animation engine knows how to mix parameters together so you never get the jerky movements. So sometimes if you, if you combine three or four animations, which sometimes happens by accident, like if you have adding an item that has animations aside and somebody starts removing it at the same time, you have a weird stacking one of the goals we can have here is that it's always smooth regardless of how what it did is it's smooth it's not jumping it's not jerking and it smoothly transitions between states and that has a lot to do with the rest based animation and okay I think that's that's all I had to say on this for now I just wanted to go over that um, next time I don't know if I'm going to do this one on Wednesday but maybe next week I'll cover some of the other ways to do animation or I can do layout animation. Layout animation is probably the one that comes next or the actual attractors. Attractors are another common form of animation. So I hope you like this little demo of what we did and maybe understand rest-based animation a little bit more and again if not just ask me questions on Twitter and I can cover it again. I don't mind doing little segments for this. Or you can ask in our other stream tomorrow. I'm sure they'll be happy to explain rest S animation again and show you an example. Um, okay, and that's all I have. So again, follow me on Twitch to get informed of my shows and or follow me on Twitter to see my articles. And until next time, I hope you enjoy playing with Fuse. Thank you.